um, so you've worked with a ton of Bay Area bands as well. Oh yeah. Which tell me all the metal the the metal bands you were. I mean, I know you worked with Exodus. Okay, yeah, Exodus was great, man. One day I get a call from Dirter. He's just like, hey man, we need to do the Exodus record. Tom's out. He's taking a little sabbatical, and um, we're going to be using uh, Paul Bostoff on drums. And uh, oh, by the way. New singer too, and guitar player. <laughs> yeah, it was I was like, I get to do X. Was basically, uh, Gary, <laughs> Jack, and Rob, and Paul, and Lee. Exactly, actually. but it, you know, it, um, I think pretty much that uh, Gary wrote every little lick and rhythm, I, and I think he did. So too. it's pure Exodus, you know, and whatever Definitely. form, you know. So we did that. That was amazing, you know, like working with Gary and how quick and precise, you know, his rhythm hand is, and. How pro he definitely he is. knows what he wants when he's in the studio. Oh, man. He, he really does. And that's that's what I love he's about been working doing with it forever. I mean, my first record. You know what? More than any band that I ever worked with, I got to say, when Exodus goes into the studio, it, I mean, the whole thing is laid out already in his head. There's no question about yeah, every definitely. word is pretty much written out. Every lick is done. Maybe a couple solos, but I you mean, know. from the beginning, my first recording with Exodus was Pledges of the Flesh, and bam, and, huh? And, I mean, every record that I did with Exodus. Up until uh, Blood In, Blood Out, his face was always on the other side of the the window, and always you know, he always very you know he leads quite well. But you've worked with other people as well, yeah, right? yeah. And then uh, let's see, from that I've been I met Eric through Steve DiGiorgio because I did the Satis record, the uh, Out for Blood record, which was an amazing experience working with John. You know, sure, Steve DiGiorgio, Darren. really good friend. I love me, Mr. CVD. Yeah, love Stevie D. I've worked with him a couple times too. Here, it's going to be my second time working with him in Testament. We're doing the new one coming right. up here. And uh, let's see, I did that, and then uh, Testament. I got to do on the first one. I worked a lot in the pre-production. That which was record was that one? Formation. Formation and damnation. Formation. I was gonna help on that. I think the first one up. since they had come back from yep. the getting back yep. together. Greggy was in the band on right. that one. I think that was the original lineup right there, pretty much. Except, Except Paul for Bossoff. Paul. 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 Paul was, Paul on was drums. The other than Louis. So I got. Right. So I already knew Paul from Exodus. So he we just hey, what's up, Paul? You know, and so he did that album with Andy. Andy Sneap recorded the whole thing, and I helped a little bit on the pre-production. We recorded some of the songs before and helped Eric work on that and some of the lyrics and chuck him in did some vocals. So then that laid the groundwork for the next one, which was uh, Dark Roots. Yeah. On that one now. I wrote songs on every one of them. You so did? Far. Oh, yeah. Oh, formation, all, all did. The, formation uh, Damnation. Yeah, uh, I know you do a lot of work. Earth. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last one I wrote, wrote as well, mm -hmm. A Brotherhood of the Snake. And I've that already written killer. three for the new one yet to be titled. So yeah, that was coming I, uh, up. It's, it's going to be brutal, too. that I do. Yeah, actually, i Writing lyrics for it, listening to it, it's testament, definitely testament. Fans oh, yeah. are not going to be disappointed. Yeah, there's not, there's no question about it. Pure, pure metal. So yeah, work when working with them was a, you know another experience. Like it, Eric is just like the mastermind. Sure, Mer Eric's like, like kind of like Gary, the same yeah, type of thing. You know, I've worked been in both bands, so I know how both heads exactly. work. Exactly, a lot I've of people don't. Seen. Eric's the quiet yeah. guy behind the throne, you yeah, know. He's but he's got he, a lot of influence on Eric all those is riffs. Tested, are, is, yep. all those riffs are him. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Use credit, and man, that was a huge experience working with him. And I did the Heathen some, record. Yeah, you did the Heathen and with the Machine Head as well, yes, right? Yes, and then I'm coming up to the Machine Head. The Machine Head was kind of weird. I got a call during the Blackening, towards the end of the Blackening. Rob wanted to do. He was almost done. You know, they were mixing, but he was recording at the same time while they were mixing in England, and he needed to do some editing on vocals. And he called me, and, I was, and he was going to do it and do it, but I guess they figured a way and did it and got it done. So I didn't hear from him again. And then I met him at a show. I think it was his show because my wife and Ginevra got to be friends. They kind of knew each other. Uh -huh. So we partied that night, and I talked to Rob. I didn't. I didn't try not to even talk about studio stuff with him. But he, you know, he had heard my name, and he remembered that he had worked with me before. And so um, after a while that we were hanging out like that, he one day he just gave me a call and said, "Listen, we got to do." Uh, it was so funny. He's all, "We have to do this thing for uh, Zelda." Was it Zelda? No, it was some orc video game where uh -huh. they rewrote his lyrics, but in a, in a la oh a Sims language. That's what it was, and they rewrote all the lyrics to one of the songs in Sims, and he had to sing it. Wow! So imagine singing your song, but they they now give you all these different words that they made up. It's not even a real language, and it was so funny. But we did a real I did a really good job on it. Like it came out fucking killer, and he was impressed. So then I, he made me do. He called me to do a. We did a cover for an Iron Maiden song. It was, um, 
How will be the name? Yeah, I actually heard that's a great cover. That's a freaking good really, recording. Really and good cover. Rob really, I helped him like sing kind of differently. Like he had never sung like that. Nobody really helped him with his vocals. They just kind of throw him in front of a mic and go, go for it. But I, I helped him a little bit with his control. He liked to scream really loud and waste a lot of air and power when he didn't have to. And I told him, you know, how to work it and measure himself. And he did. And, and that song came out killer. And then from then on, we did a Pantera cover, I think, Hostile. And then I started pre, he's all, I told him one night, we're drunk, and I'm like, man, you got to let me fucking do the album. I think I can do this. And that's Unto the Locust. That's Unto the Locust. And he was already thinking about it. I can tell. That's why I even had the balls to ask him. But I was like, just let me do it, man. You know, you can have Colin mix it. I know he's your boy. You know, he's been mixing it for a long time. Right, right. So he's like, I got a call from Joey. Joey was like, okay, let's do it. I was like, right on. We did it. We worked on it. We're working really hard. And uh, we were mixing it, right? He was, uh, Colin was mixing it. He was almost kind of done with one song, when his wife dies. Oh man! I know stories are just how oh, life. One door man. closes, another opens. His wife wow. dies. He's out of the project. You know, he's got to take care of all that. You know, even though they're not, they weren't together. She was his manager. And sure, they were really good friends, and they had a great relationship. So none, uh, you know. He, there's nothing to say. He was out, you know, and Rob just like, dude, you got to mix it. I'm not going to give this to somebody that, you know, you've been recording the right. pre-productions and I built a studio we were at his place and we did all the pre-production there and I took it to my studio, mixed it. Then he took it down to a uh, nuclear blast and played it for everybody. Actually, it wasn't even nuclear blast yet. It was uh still road, road runner, runner, right? Yeah, still it was road a road runner, runner right yeah. before the big road axe runner. dropped. Yeah. Right. Before they kind of split up a little bit. And, well, yeah, they got bought off of Warner brothers. Yeah. So yeah, so we did that, and uh, and it fell on my lap to mix it. I had to take what he had started, basically the mix, and mix the whole entire record, you know. And that took a while because Machine Head, right in the middle of that, went to on a Mayhem Festival. Uh -huh. So it was like I'm sending Rob mixes, and he's on a bus somewhere in Arkansas, and he can't download a mix, and he can't <laughs> play a mix, and so it was a, it was a long road you know i did that one and then the next one was uh diamonds uh -huh. you know bloodstone and diamonds right great record we went to uh again we went to jingle town recorded there mixed it there and oh actually we went back to my studio and finished the entire record after that one there we had some technical difficulties at the studio and ended up switching gears and taking it back to try it and from there we took it to the end man we actually literally we recorded pretty much everything except some of the vocals and a few leads we just said you know what it's not coming out right we need to start again and do it better and we did we just came back to my studio and it came out amazing do i like that, that is because you felt more comfortable inside your own studio and you're there and you know everything and it's on just... the second machine head record they started they brought in all these people like they're like okay you're doing too much you're engineering you're helping produce you're fucking mixing like, we're going to get a Pro Tools guy. So, they, if, be known to me, they hired this guy, you know. And so, he was going to do all the Pro Tools stuff. I was going to set up the mics, pick the mics, all this stuff, and record everything, you know. But one thing led to another, and that guy was out of the picture. And for the reasons that he was out of the pictures, we needed to redo the stuff again. So, Well, I've watched you uh, work the board quite well. And, I mean, I don't – you know it – Pro Tools as well as anybody oh, that I know that I knows Pro, Pro Tools. Tools. So I, I wouldn't even know why you would do something like that. I mean, I've worked close on with you on many, many projects, and I feel that uh, to me it's better. I think he just felt that if I didn't have like if I didn't have five, with it kind of helped though because I was able to like just really focus on his playing and be like, no, do it again, do it again. Yeah, as opposed to doing the playing, making sure everything is good and doing the technical stuff. You know, I get it. You know, that's right. He just I think picked the wrong guy. The, the problem was when he did that pre-production for that record, I was super busy doing like 10 other things. So he got this kid to help him do it. And then when he, the guy was helping him do the pre-production, he's like, you, you're going to do the pre Talk about that. You know, like you've got so many different projects quite potentially going on at the same time. How do you balance, I guess, the producer's edge and the engineer's edge in the ear for so many different projects that may have different you know, different types of tones and different types of levels mm -hmm. and, and different types of vocal styles. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, so how do you 
Tell us how you balance yeah, you're mixed, that. You're how mixing you... one thing, and you're like, okay, this is you know, two right, totally right. different. Probably right. has I mean, three hours on this, and then all of a sudden you got to shut that out and start recording something else, yeah. right? What and, I do in that case is like, okay, if I, usually when I'm mixing, I'll come in early. I get up early, so I, I drop my daughter off, and I'm in, in my studio by like seven thirty. I, I love that, and that's when I mix. I start mixing fresh in the morning. I have my tea, get a bagel, and then I go in there, listen to a little music, low. Get into the vibe, you know, and then I start mixing for about from seven to probably like I would say one, maybe two, and then no more mixing or mastering. Then I just do tracking stuff from then on. Like I'll have a vocalist come in and do vocals, you know, for three or four hours, or I'll, I'll edit drums for like nine hours or something. Is there a point in the day where you've now listened to so much music that you've got to shut it off because? Or can you just keep oh, working? Yeah. And, you know, no, that happens to me all the time. Like, yeah, dude, I'm going to your show tonight. Absolutely. I'm going to be there. I promise. 10 o'clock rolls in. I've been there since 7 a.m. listening to metal. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't, think, I don't yeah, blame you. I'm not going to the show. But does it ever affect your ear as far as like, you got, you know, look, I got to go home now. I'd love to do this and get into this next song. But I've been doing this all day no, and totally. I am fucking tired and it's going to ruin the final product that comes out, you know, do you it's get the like ear that? fatigue? Yeah. Yeah. Ear fatigue. It's called ear fatigue. So that's why you don't want to do, you know, I always save multiple. I'm a multiple saver for a mix of one song. There'll be like 10 different versions. On. Uh-huh. So I, if I get something and I fuck something up one night, cause I decided to get crazy on the EQ at like 1230 at night. Right. And then I get there in the morning and I go, what the hell was I thinking? No. I liked it better the way it was. So then I go to the version before that I have saved. Sure. And I'm back to square one. I always have a backup plan. It's That's like smart. you gotta leave a door open. Saving it is smart. What are you yeah. working on right now? You got anything in the in the books right now? Right now I just finished five bands. I did uh, I did a mix for this band called Dark Sky Chorus. It's a band from Oregon. It's nice. got uh, Ira Black now just joined I that love band. Ira. But they're uh they're a pretty good band. They got John Moyer wrote some songs on there. Nice. He's a bass player from Disturbed. Yep. So we did a mix on that and some mastering. And um I did uh Jellum, you know Aaron Jellum? Oh yeah, I heard a little bit of it. You played me some yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in the band. Love Jell. He's uh, you know, from Laws Rocket, the guitar yep. player, writer. Jelly, 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 jelly. Good jelly. friend of mine. Yeah, did the Laws with him. He came in with his blues band. He's always he's a he's a closet blues aficionado and he really loves feely good bluesy guitar he likes bon i thought it was a little bit more more rock and roll but yeah, I, one, I, that I, song I, was that yeah, song played was me some stuff. i played I you the, the hardest rock and yeah. mix because i wanted you to hear the yeah. mix but it necessarily not you know but there's a lot of stevie ray vaughn kind of funk shit going on yeah, in that saying, record bonamassa i love Bonamassa. yeah, yeah. I love Joe really bonamassa. funky yeah i'm working on that i just finished that and i did two death metal projects a couple bands from you know santa cruz and another one from here yeah, I'm just moving along, man. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Keep well, hey, the testament man, it's good in. having you in here. I want to have you in from time to time, and uh, we'll talk about other things. Like, I got a lot of other things that I want to discuss with you about, like, um, you know, just different topics that things go on in the studio, you know what I mean, and preparing bands and your dislikes. So we'll talk to Juan many times here i'll have him back in because he's one of my good partners and there's so much stuff we can cover on this stuff but uh remember to leave me comments let me know and uh juan tell me tell everybody where uh, if they need an engineer producer where you're at where they can get a hold of you you can get a hold of me at try studios.net or you can get a hold of me on facebook juan or tiaga at facebook.com very easy to find. Just type it in there. And believe me, like I said, I've I don't go. I don't do that Instagram and none of that other stuff. Well, it's very simple. Then there yeah. you go. And like I said, I've worked with him many times. Uh, he's done so many credible records. You know, if you're looking for a demo, even out of the country, out of the state, this is the digital age now. You know, there's a lot that can be done. Oh God, I got I get stuff from everywhere. I bet you do. I mix a band from Korea. Exactly. See, there you go, right there. Check him out. He knows what he's doing. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel, and we will see you guys real soon in the vault. Thanks for being here. Peace. Peace.